Today we're going to tie the Briar Creek wet fly. The Briar Creek for me is a, a personal pattern. It was named after the small native trout stream that I grew up along and I learned to fish on. Um, I tied it to revisit that stream probably 25 years later and it did really well. It, uh, it was the fly of the day so the name stuck. Um, it's changed a few times for me uh, not dramatically. I originally tied it with a little bit larger uh, hackle and mallard quill for the wing. However, uh, I since have taken to using uh, a Brahma silver badger skin for the uh, for the wing and lemon wood duck tipped wood duck for the uh, the overwing so it's changed a little bit it hasn't stopped catching fish it actually uh, is an unbelievable pattern for uh, for panfish bluegill crushed this fly I fish it under a popper quite a bit uh, on about a foot long dropper and just let it follow on behind the popper and uh, bluegill do not let it go by. But I start out with red tippet. I start out with a red tippet tail. I tie it in at the second band, the black band, and right at the barb of the hook. So it's, it's not a very long tail. It's uh, just long enough to be prominent. It's not shank length or anything like that. And then next I tie in my rib. The um, rib is gold tinsel, small gold tinsel. I've used wire, but I always seem to come back to uh, the flat tinsel. It just seems to do a little bit better for me on this particular pattern. Nymphs not so much, but uh, for this pattern it, it works better than wire. And next we're going to dub the body. I use natural rabbit, basically a natural cottontail color, hairline dubbing. I don't know if this is considered natural dark or light. I have both. I have used both, but uh, just a standard gray cottontail, undyed. It's not a large, not a large abdomen. Fairly thin pattern. I'm gonna wrap it forward. And I'm gonna use a little bit more. I uh, I bring this body fairly far forward not to crowd the eye too much but everything comes to the front of this fly fairly fast I do crowd the eye a little bit more than with most patterns and I stop the body about an eye length behind Palmer, our rib forward. We're going to keep it fairly wide spaced. We don't want to overdo it. The 
You don't want it to come out all gold. And I wrap just a little bit. I tuck the, the hackle back in to the dubbing. I feel it uh, just gives me a more prominent wing. And next you're going to prepare your your Brahma hackle. I clip the butts a little bit and I tie it in base first. And this is a fairly heavy collar. Not what you'd consider a sparse fly by any stretch. I like to give at least two full wraps. I clip it and then I sweep everything back. Nothing fancy. Probably not going to win any awards with this fly. But I wrap everything back into the body. And your hackle length is going to be basically shank length. I take it past the point of the hook to the end of the body. And then you're going to tie in your overwing. Like I said, I used to use mallard matching quills. I didn't find them any, any more durable. So I went to the, the look of the Tip wood duck, and uh, it has really done very well in this pattern. I get a small clump. I go with the curve. This always has a curve to it, so I sweep it back, and I put the tips, the white tips, midway into the tail. I sweep things back. I build a sharp, fairly steep head. And then whip finish. hitchhikers there and then to finish this fly like any wet fly I'm gonna finish the head I use Sally Hansen's and I'll put two substantial coats on this head Give it a good gloss. Make sure my eye remains clear. And then as soon as this dries, I'll add the second coat. That's the Briar Creek Wet. Like I said, it's named after a childhood stream. 
It is excellent for trout. It is even a better pattern for panfish. Uh, I keep it in my box. It has saved quite a few days for me when it really shouldn't have. But there it is. I hope it adds to your box. Good luck on the water. Thank you.